gonna be the cowboy, Bryce. Ugh. This is your hat. No, it's yours. Stop it's it, Tyler, Bryce. no! Tyler, you and your friend need to quiet down. Your father's coming home soon. Okay, Mom. Oh! No, I want to be the homo. No. I'm the homo habilis. No, you're the cowboy. I'm the homo habilis. No, I'm the homo habilis. No. You're the Boys, cowboy. what's going on? Mr. Brown? Tyler wants to be Homo Habilis in our Cowboys vs. Caveman game, and I do too. <laughs> Tell me, boys, what do you know about Homo Habilis? Well, gee whiz, Dad. I guess we don't really know anything at all. I don't know a whole lot about Homo Habilis. <laughs> Come on, sport. Bring your friend, and I'll tell you about Homo Habilis. The Homo Habilis and you. Tell us about Homo habilis, Pop. Homo habilis, the handyman. First discovered in 1960, he lived approximately 2.3 to 1.4 million years ago, at the beginning of the Pleistocene era, in Turkana and Kenya. Were there other cavemen at the time, Dad? As a matter of fact, there were. They were around other bipedal-like creatures called Paranthibus and maybe Australopithecus africanus. Yeah, and the Paranthropists were all herbivores, which means that they weren't in direct competition with the Homo habilis. Golly gee willikers. What does Homo habilis look like? That's a good question, Bryce. Well, you see, Homo habilis is slightly smaller than us. It's estimated that male Homo habilis weighed around 114 pounds. In fact, their estimated height is 5 foot 2. <laughs> and their arms are too long. I'm 5 foot 2. I'm not. Is it true they had huge brains? Yeah, habilis were geniuses. <laughs> Actually, no, quite the opposite. They had brains much smaller than ours, with a cranial capacity around 700 centimeters cubed. That's tiny, considering our brain capacity is on average 1,325 centimeters cubed. Go away. That's tiny, considering our cranial capacity is on average 1,325 centimeters cubed. So they must have been really dumb. Uh, but they were the first to be able to cross their thumb over their hands, which gave them the ability to use tools. What did they eat? Homo habilis were scavengers, and they feasted on pretty much anything they can get their hands on, from plants to leftovers from other animals. <laughs> but they wouldn't touch your mom's cooking. <laughs> How do we know that, Mr. Brown? Well, Bryce, we know that because of their teeth. <laughs> their teeth? <laughs> yes, their teeth. Their teeth were small. Their teeth? Yeah, their teeth. <clears throat> you see, their teeth were very small, but they had a very thick enamel for biting through the animal hides and wood plants. There is even evidence that they ate marrow from animal bones, breaking the bones open with the various tools they built. See, this tool building is a very important behavior. Behavior? <laughs> yes, a behavior is something a creature does in response to the things around them. For example, our friend Homo habilis built old bone tools to get bone marrow and to cut the skin off animals. Oh, I wish I was the one who discovered Homo habilis. Well, you're not. He's right. Homo habilis was found by Mary and Louis Leakey 10 years from now in the 1960s. In Old Vi Gorge, they found a specimen that was distinctly different from earlier Australopithecines. They later defined these species as Homo habilis. My dad says that Homo habilis is actually an Austral of Percopris. Well, your dad's a moron. <laughs> no, but actually this has become quite a controversy. You see, when Homo habilis was first found, very little was known about what it was. So they assumed it was an Australopithecus? <laughs> I think you mean Australopithecus, Sport. But yes, exactly. Many paleoanthropologists were reluctant to accept Homo habilis as a new genus. However, a full cranium with a cranial capacity much higher than Australopithecus was found in Lake Turkana, making people like your dad look dumb. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Ah, no problem. Hey, I have an idea who Homo habilis can be. Yeah. <laughs>
set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in you.